What's going on, Outsiders? Today, before we get started on this podcast, it would mean the world to us if you could like, comment, subscribe, the whole YouTube spiel, as you know. And make sure you are following our Instagram account uh, for any updates, any products, you know, just cool pictures, you know, just chilling with us basically on there. Uh, it's outsiders underscore OFXS. And that's about it. So enjoy this one and we'll see you on the next one. Oh, fuck. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd done lost you. I thought I lost it. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Oh, I can like stop recording it now too. Same time. All right. It's all good. Not Is all my good. video quality still terrible, or should I law and order it, or like? Well, if you do law and order, is that how you're gonna sit? I don't know. It's gonna sunburn the top of my head or something. <laughs> I can I'll burn the top of my head. You go yeah. to work tomorrow on this side of your face is red. Just that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put a hat on to have this light on me. Ah. I mean, we have them, you know. That's true. You want me to go no, get one? No big deal, right? Probably should be wearing paraphernalia right now. Paraphernalia? Wait, what? I should be wearing our paraphernalia. Oh, right. Dude, I forgot all these notes. Is my quality like really terrible? I don't know what's going on here. It's not that bad. Okay. Are you lying? I mean, it's not great. <laughs> I, I don't know what you want me to do here. How do I? You just be you, buddy. No, it's not that. I mean, it's okay. It says. There we go. See full video feed. I don't know what that means. I want to click on it, but I don't want it to. Yeah, you'll lose. I'll Wait, lose you. Get better. I I clicked on. I don't know what. No idea what I just clicked, but we are f- sixty nine years old. It's a good number. <laughs> yeah, that's what I keep my AC on at the house. Nice. <laughs> Only sixty nine. I get. <laughs> All right, so this past, in the past episodes, we've talked about a lot of shenanigans. I saw something funny on Instagram, and then I jotted it down. What did you see on Instagram that you jotted down? What car brand has the most annoying fan base? Mercedes-Benz. I don't know anything about Mercedes. Me neither. So I assume the owners are really annoying. Let me tell you something about Mercedes, though, that I noticed. It's all their new cars. Mercedes is controversial. Mercedes... Their new designs are the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. And they won't age well. All of a sudden, they've stopped making timeless cars. Because you look at the new ones. Imagine the new Mercedes in like 20 years. Nobody's going to want to buy that. Because they look horrible. they got to go like to the race routes. They need to go back to... Yeah. You know who never lost it though? BMW's always made pretty cars. And they continue to do so. Minus the giant grills, but like... I don't like the huge kidney grills. It's not yeah. a... But for the most part, they make good-looking cars. Yeah. And they lost that. But I think I sent it to you on Instagram. There was, like, this these guys that were talking about, would you rather have a $25,000 BMW M3 or a Civic that you dump 25 k into track? Like, both cars you're tracking. I need I need more context here. Am I only tracking like they're track only cars? Or do I have to live with this thing every day? That does change it up a lot. Oh, 100%. I don't want to drive a, a Civic with $25,000 worth of parts to work every day. No. But it would be better to track a Civic because you can easily replace parts. Yeah. And it's like endless. Like that. So their thing was they they were talking about they were talking about the BMW M3 because it'll hold its value longer and it's basically track ready, ready to go. But it's not. Yeah. Over time it won't be, yeah. No, it's definitely not. You're gonna want to upgrade a bunch of stuff. At- you so you're we're talking about like an E ninety M3 with a V eight? Uh, well, yeah, you could probably afford to get one of those now. E46s are like that much too now. So which one are they talking about? Because either of those is going to take like... I think they put a picture of an E46. 
Okay. So an E46 is going to take suspension, weight reduction. Subframe, re- subframe reinforcement. Subframe reinforcement because the rear subframe is going to fall out. On the I, think they have, I think they do rod bearings as well. Yep. And then brakes and wheels, tires. It's, it's not lines. A, yeah, it's not a point. In, like, you can't. It's not that easy. And then it's like, like you're not going to be able to keep going with that, I guess, unless you force induction later on. But then the Civic is like, who cares? Throw a turbo on it or, or a supercharger or whatever. And, and yeah, I mean, you have way more endless opportunities with the Civic, motor-wise. Yep. It's, it's more of an... That's where it comes in. It's like, um, is this going to be my only car and I have to daily drive it and take it to the track? Or... Civic would still be that option. I'm not daily driving a 10 can Civic that's built for the track. 100% not. <laughs> yeah. It sounds horrible. Especially in the rain. It sounds horrible. Oh, yeah. Well, the BMW would suck too, though. Same kind of tires, probably. Yeah, but there's more creature comforts in the car. It's just like... It's nicer to be in that car. Than Much the- nicer to be in. Much nicer to be in. So it's a it's an interesting topic. I know which way I'd vote because if it was my track only car, the Civic. Right. If I if I had to take it to work on Monday after the track day, then 120 percent to the BMW. Yeah, that's true. That, that makes that, sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I think we grew out of that phase where it's like fun to beat yourself up daily on. No, in your yeah. track car yeah i'm, I'm good uh, i remember in high school i didn't use ac just because you didn't no I, that's how i am with the subaru right now still yeah. no, no reason i mean yeah. it's i break but like it won't break but in my mind this is a horrible idea i want all the i want the extra five horsepower whatever your head just looked like Conan for a second. I saw it. And it was, <laughs> you do out of it, but you had to call it off. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> the frame rate was horrible. That was funny. Dang, it's dense. Oh. I've been messing with this like the entire time. What's doing it is it's, it's the background causing your head to just fall away. I just can't move. Gotta stay here the whole time. <laughs> it's not that funny, Doug. It's like there's part of you that just disappears. <laughs> I see it. And your ear just goes away and shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, you have to put sunglasses on, boy. My head's gonna be bright. <laughs> yeah. I just I just also remembered It's like no flattering angle. When we when I when we get done with this recording isn't it side by side us? I don't know. Is it? This is my yeah. lamp right here. Just... Yeah, I see that. <laughs> talking. To... It's like the sun coming out of your hood. <laughs> Hang on. Please hold. <sighs> is it going to side by side? I, I don't remember how it does it. I don't remember, dude. It's literally... cut off half of what's going on here. Dang it, I broke my lamp. Nope. Sorry. It's been no. six months since you since we've done one. I think it's been longer than that it said 12 12 oh yeah we're in the eighth month just kidding yes, yes, <laughs> we are. jeez hmm. so i've been stuck on that band that i sent you the other day sleep token isn't it just the dude now it's four people main the lead singer his name is vessel okay and, and there's like Vessel 2, Vessel 3, and Vessel 4, the drummer, the bassist, the guitarist, <clears throat> anonymous, but they kill it. They're like, each of them are fantastic at their role, and we have no idea who they are. And I sent you the drummer um, covering Alkaline. Yeah. And uh, he that was, was cool. murdering that song. And yeah, we don't know this, so that's cool. Yeah, that was cool. I liked it. I was bumping it in the van. It's crazy that there's somebody with that much talent and we have no idea who it is. I know. It's part of their their lore or whatever. At first, it didn't look like you were holding anything. Your cup is invisible right there. 
It really is. <laughs> it really is. Nice. <laughs> Be like Will William, don't worry about what's in my cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. The uh what are you gonna do about a new lens? Oh man, I probably gonna do um the nifty fifty, but the uh the RF version for mirrorless cameras, for mirrorless cannons. Try and do the 51.8. I think it's like 200 bucks, something like that, that I don't want to spend because, I mean, but this lens is like legit like 14 years old. Yeah. I bought it. I bought it back in like 20, 2010 or something like that. Yeah. I don't know how old this is. I'm sure mine's pretty old. I remember buying mine brand new for like 50 bucks when it was um it's like a Christmas special or whatever. It's like it's either 50 or 100 bucks, but it wasn't more than 100 bucks. And then the price for the Nifty 50 went up. And now you can't get one for I think yeah, the price went up cuz I bought one for somebody else and the uh it ended up being like 150 or something like that. A couple years later, a few years later. But yeah, I need, a, I need another lens for it. Yeah. It sucks because I was on that. I was excited to use it and document it. And then it just. Ref- Taking stills, it's fine, but it refuses to focus properly for uh, for video. Yeah. And honestly, it was like struggling for a while and I just pushed through it. And now it's like completely missing focus, which sucks. But yeah. get the video came out right. Yeah, the video came out cool. The uh, I still really would like to get like a twenty four, or a twenty four to thirty five or thirty five, whatever. Your camera's a full frame. Yeah, that'll be good. I think I have a number. I've got this giant boy, twenty four seventy. Yeah, twenty four seventy L series. Yeah, but it's not a. It's not for a mirrorless, so I have the adapt the can like the Canon adapter to run it on my camera. And the lens is good; it's just it weighs like fifty pounds. Yeah, but that's what happens when you get a lens that's like that has a a focal length that that wide twenty four yeah. seven is going to be super heavy. And that you just you just twist it to get that that length right. Yeah, it it works in the it works in the opposite of what you think. To get a to to go to twenty four, the lens extends, and to go to seventy, it it like retracts. It's like the opposite of what you would think. But it's opposite of what I would have thought. Yep. I need to look into that. Like, because when we go, if we do like indoor show stuff, it's so hard with a fifty to take you pictures. Go to indoor show? You go to shows now? It's Still? only been like three, four years. <laughs> <laughs> the last time, last time we went to a show was Riverside, wasn't it? last year yeah that's not the show together yeah which we got to do something well we're deaf motions coming up dang that's like that's like in 20 days huh yeah my car still looks scared <laughs> why all oh, that wheel gap somebody scared it that's unfortunate i got some r2d tubes for you <sighs> problem is you're not down the street buddy yeah, I'll make it work now, though. Just come up and said... install the new ones and take the R2-D2s. R2-D2s. I'm trying oh, to... Yes, 2000, so you can make it a trip. Oh, well, you need to get a line to also. I know. That's the problem. And I can't drive the S2000 there for us to do it there, because... You'll need an alignment. Yep. Somebody's getting an alignment one way or another. Well, if you kept your height the same... It... I mean, if you ballpark the the alarm or the uh, cool over height, it'd be the same. Problem is, the spring rates are completely different, so the height is gonna gonna change. It won't, it won't have as much droop, probably. Yep. I know, I know. I need to, I need to get on it. I don't know what to do. I told you about that credit card before we started going. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some Owens on the way. 
from that. There's okay. a dude locally. I was trying to find it. I I thought I had screenshotted it. And he's got a set that are pretty nice for like fifteen hundred bucks locally. The DFVs, ten k something like that. E shelf DFV Golans. I think the fronts. I think the fronts have like the sake bomb, whatever. Saki bomb, what? what? The rears of what is that? What yeah, is that? that's two thousand. Olin's DFV with Saki bomb cups. Oh, like the lower cups for lowering. Because I think yes. the regular Olin's don't have. Um... Yeah, I think he's not talking about like the lower forks, maybe. Because yeah, the lower forks. The off-the-shelf Olins don't go that low. Those have a big gash, though. He's gonna say he only drove it a hundred miles or something like that. He tracked with them. Okay, he was straight up about it. Yeah. This is the other topic. Yeah, he <laughs> and their swift rears, and I'm pretty sure they're. I was trying to find the post because I was mentioning it. I think it was like. <sighs> 12k or 13k 11k or 10k i don't remember can you throw those springs on there without revalving olins i don't know how wide their damping range is their what valving is i would assume right no no he has so a set of he has a set of coney yellow uh shocks with ground control sleeves too man i haven't heard I haven't heard of people using sleeves in a long time. He has those for like six hundred bucks. Fifteen hundred for those Olins is pretty, pretty good. Solid. Except yeah. for the gash and the other one. I don't know why I can't find the. He had a separate post. He had a separate post with them, um, talking about the spring rates. Now I'm getting worried because I can't find it. Why are you getting worried? Might have sold. It doesn't matter. He probably wouldn't respond anyway. <laughs> Most dudes don't. Oh, well. What do you think? Those $500 teens sold too. What do you think is the most dangerous car on the road? Like if you see that see it coming up behind you, you just anything can happen. Oof. So we have the Challenger, the Charger, the Altima. Any Kia. Any Kia. Impala, Ford Fusion. Any car that you can get a rental car in. All the windows are tinted, including the windshield. Danger is approaching. Hyundai Elantras. Yes. Are pretty... These are all like rental level cars. Dude, that top three though. Challenger, Charger, Ultima. 100%. Four, top four, Kia. Yep. That's a problem. It's a, it's a problem for them. <laughs> Extra credit if they have temp tags on them. You're Extra. for sure getting ran off the road. 100%. Or, if the, or if the Kia has all the hubcaps. All matching. Same hubcaps. You're same, getting, with the, same with the Ultimas. You're in for some trouble, buddy. Yeah. Ooh. It's 100%. Same thing here. Yeah. I think I almost got rear-ended in the Supra. <laughs> yeah. That was a delightful experience. Like, w Where were you at? Literally down the street. I was like 10 minutes from home. I just yeah. took the, just turned out of the neighborhood. I, I literally made two left turns. That's it. In the journey. Dale Earnhardt. I mean, right. No, I made two right turns. Just kidding. How do our, 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 whatever whatever makes lefts on or right. How, how dare you? How dare how dare lefts only. Lefts only. Um it's a little racist, but okay. If you turn right out of the neighborhood, drove down, made another right, and as I'm going down this two lane road, traffic in opposite directions. Okay, I see this look I've made eye contact with this kid. It's coming through the cross street, stopped at the stop sign, but there was something weird about it, so like it caught my eye. It was like a second gen Tacoma, 
And like mine? He, he, what's that? Like mine or the one before? Like, what's yours? Second. Yeah, I think it was like yours, but it wasn't fancy at all. It was like base model base. I don't know why. I think I noticed him because like he got hard on the brake and then like. Did you see the dip? Yeah, so he did that and then like moved forward to the stop sign. Like he didn't stop at the stop sign. He stopped before it and then like moved up and then stopped again. And I'm like, it's weird. So I noticed it. And so I make eye contact with him. And like I looked at his face for some reason because sketchy movements, right? So right. I drove by him and um, caught up. I wasn't speeding. I just the person in, I caught up to the person in front of me, which is like in a Camry. And they were trying to make a, a left into their driveway. Yeah. So, um, so that's why I caught up to them because we were slowing down the turn. But traffic was crazy in the other direction. So I stopped behind them. And uh, it's like 30 seconds of stop because, like, crazy traffic. Yeah. As I'm there, I'm like, dang, this, I hate being in that position. I hear tire squeals. Oh, shit. And I look up in the rearview mirror, and here comes the white truck. Yeah. Just, yeah and i'm like what do i do now and so i'm like he's gonna hit this car and i i've had it out for a total of 10 minutes and i haven't driven it in like a month yeah now it's about to get total so that's that's awesome so right at the i mean like he is on break hard and i'm like what do i do now so i i there's ditch like grass and then ditch to my right or oncoming traffic to my left yeah. or just like push the dude in front of me yeah <laughs> And so the only thing I can do is, like, the very last minute, I move over to, to as left as I can go before crossing the line and, like, pulled as close up to the person in front of me as possible. And then I see him, like, shoot by me, shoot Holy by the quarter, and, like, stop, like, parallel to my rear quarter, like, halfway in the ditch, halfway on the, on the road still. So, like, I don't know if me moving over a little bit, like, gave him that much extra room, but, like... Right, maybe. Yeah. And then I was just so freaked out about the the event that when the person in front of me finally made a left, I just launched the car and got out of there. Like, no yeah. reason. I just launched it and, and left. And, like, it was in sport mode and everything. I was banging through gears for no reason other than sheer panic. Well, you... <laughs> <laughs> for no reason. And because you have the power, but yeah. It wasn't even, like, I just... My mind was, like, f fight or flight. And right. <laughs> it was flight for sure. And then I had to pull over at the next gas station just to like collect myself because I was literally shaking because it was that close. Dude, that yeah, I've had that happen numerous times, but in the van. But still, if somebody hits the van, I'm kind of screwed because like we have it all custom built out in the inside. So I don't know how like any of that would get fixed. Like, he would have probably would have totaled the Supra. Oh yeah, which oh, yeah. is fantastic being like 10 minutes away and i was like i i texted you as soon as it happened and I was yeah like, i'm like 10 minutes into this drive like it was just a bad car week in general i was like should i just go home yeah just cut my losses and go home just in case and i was like you just nah. get out get out and walk home right yeah i was like should i just cut, cut my losses and go home or just continue the drive as normal and i was like can't be a quitter and i continued the drive just fine yeah the, uh, but earlier in the week, the S thousand got smacked by tire carcass, and then forgot about that. Yep, day before my birthday, got smacked by a tire carcass. I was just trying to just trying to drive. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to drive. That's it. I'm trying to like get my mind right, and then smacked by a tire. And then, dude, I, you day can't. Before the, the day before the Supra, something hit my windshield and, and cracked it in the S thousand. Yeah. But almost there was a uh, on the highway today. There was a, a ladder in the highway. Love it, dude. I, it was almost too late. Was it? Was it like? It's never that way. So you could just drive. Thankfully, over. it was. Thankfully, it was, like it was straight. Parallel to the, okay. Yes. Well, I I went to the right. because the car in front of me, like very late, was like whoop, and I was like whoa shit, like. I should have had a. I mean, I had like probably three or I had probably had three car links and but like in between us, but like for something like that that comes up like real quick. Ladder or one um, of those just a, a real ladder, like a ten foot ladder. 
like an A ladder or or, or just a flat one? Because the A ladders are it kind was of... flat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I could have got lucky in the van and straddled it, but yeah. You could have straddled it, or could have like put a hole in the oil pan real quick. Depending on what you're in. You remember that Seinfeld episode where Which Newman one? ran over the? Uh... Oh no, he ran over a sewing machine. I was gonna, I was gonna say it was a ladder and the uh, fire. <laughs> uh uh-uh. Dude, I started watching that show. I am like, I don't remember how far I am. Actually, pretty funny. I mean. It's wild that he got paid so much for that per episode, but like it's not that funny, but Yeah. I'm on season four, episode twenty two. Wow, I didn't know it was that far. It's pretty good. Kendall's been watching this new show called Lincoln Lawyer. It's okay. It's an old show. Like it's been around for a while. It's not new. Lincoln Lawyer? Yeah. It says twenty twenty three, two seasons. Really? It sounds yeah. really familiar. Which one are you thinking of? I don't know. Lincoln Logs? <laughs> that's, that's old school. Netflix. Oh, was, wasn't, was it a movie? I don't remember. It, I think it has I happened. They got Too Fast, Too Furious on Netflix too right now. Okay. Ryan O'Connor, Roman Pierce, <laughs> Monica Fuentes. <laughs> Ryan O'Connor, Roman <laughs> Pierce. Ooh, Fuentes. Yeah, that, the Lincoln Lawyer was a 2011 film. Was it? Oh, dude, they have Tokyo Drift on here too, and the whole thing. See, I wasn't smoking something. It's it was it was legit. The Lincoln basically. Lawyer. Was, was a, that a movie though? Yeah, it was a 2011 movie. Movie. How can they have the same name? I don't know. Maybe one's called The Lincoln Lawyer, and the one right now is called Lincoln Lawyer. Like the Ohio State University versus Ohio University. Is that because we're the outsiders? I'm just kidding. Yeah. T O F X S. <laughs> that one's not even on my. Okay, well, whatever. Were you going to use the same people for the banners or, or who are you using? Probably. They just. Man, they, they're awesome, but they get swamped with work from everybody else. So. They, I think we're one of the only people that was kind of up for small things like stickers and stuff. Yeah. So they, I mean, rightly so, they put us on the back burner until things clear up because we're, we're just the homies, right? We're just losers. Yeah, pretty much. They do great, though. It's just you got to wait on them because... We're just stupid street racers. We are. Bunch of Fernandos. <laughs> He's going to watch this. And... He probably won't. He's not a good friend. Oh, man, that sucks. He might. I don't know. Yeah, look, 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 look at this. So I bought this. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bro. This right here, right? It's a little OBD2. OBD. OBD2, like, connector. Yeah. For the GX. And you plug it in, and it's supposed to do two things supposed to be able to like if your windows are down and you lock the car all the windows go up if you unlock the car all the windows can go down at the same time and the best part was that when you park it and lock it it'll auto fold the mirrors fantastic that's the only feature i wanted so i bought it from china it took like a month to get in and finally came in plug it in does nothing so i'm like they just stole all your data <laughs> Yeah, from the, from, from <laughs> they know all my driving habits now. Actually, no, they, they would know where I'm located because it has a navigation built in. So that's that's sick. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> um, you can't, can't trust. You can't trust them. Yeah. So, anyways, it doesn't work. <clears throat> so I sent them a message. Pay like thirty five dollars for that. So I sent them a message like, hey, it doesn't work. Like I ordered it. It's my years. On like on the description and everything, yeah. What do you suggest I do? And they're like, oh, we're so sorry. We'll send you. We'll send you another one. I was like, all right, sounds good. So the other one somehow came in like two weeks. The first one took like a month. The second one came in two weeks. Uh-huh. So got the second one in. Number two. <laughs> got the second one in. Plugged it in. So exact exact same behavior. And I'm like, hey, bro, what what do we uh like? What happens now? <laughs> so 
they're like, oh, just uh, just send it back and we'll give you a refund. What? Okay. So where? And then they give me the super long address that's formatted hilariously bad. Right. I don't even know. I'm somewhere in China. And I'm like, okay, uh, do I just <laughs> I'd send it back to you and hope for the best? Like, And so I like thought about it. I'm like, if you give me a, like, sh- send me a shipping label, I'll send both of them back. Yeah. And acted like they didn't understand what I was saying, and they sent me the address again. They're like, well, here's our address. And I'm like, no, bro, that's not what I asked at all. And Jeez. So now I'm stuck with two of these. That They might work on, like, a newer GX, but... Thankfully, they weren't. That wasn't that much money, right? I'm like, was do it? I change them for the thirty five dollars or just no? Just give them a bad. I can get the money back, but is it worth it? I guess. Just... Where did you find them at? eBay. Oh. So I mean, it'll. Well, I eBay. I got the wrong thing. They'll side with me and give me a give me my money back, but yeah, if you do like goods and services, I guess yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I also got this from eBay, which is uh, it's hilarious because now I feel sort of like a ricer, but it's, uh, it's a little air filter, right? Yeah. You know, the little breathers that you put on your valve covers? Yeah. So one of the common things, one of the common issues with the GX is they use, uh, you know, they use the, um, the air pumps. It's like when you first turn the vehicle on, the air pump turns on and it pumps uh Oh, like the S2000? What's that? Yeah. Like the S2000? Yeah. So this, I don't know how many air pumps the GX has, but at least one. Did. So like it pumps air into a certain part of the head or whatever to get the catalytic converters to like activate sooner. It's emissions crap. So I still don't even understand what those are for. What's that? Like the air pumps. I don't understand. It just pumps air at the catalytic converters. To get them to heat up quicker so you're not so they they start working faster because you know you, you like when the catalytic converter gets up to temperature that's when it starts actually like catalyzing and, and filtering the bad thing uh, well never mind that would have been stupid. <laughs> so that's why the s2000 and all that have them so like that air pump turns on shoots air at the catalytic converter gets it to heat up quicker and then you're better for the environment Trees love you, all that stuff. <laughs> all the hippie people are right. Good job. So, anyways, the air pump for the GX has a a foam filter that just like pops into it. Okay. But like the age of the vehicle now, that filter starts degrading over time, and uh-huh. then pieces of it break apart and then get sucked into the mechanism and then just clog yeah. it up. Right. So about that filter to put onto the front of it and then just remove that foam filter because that one's not going to fall apart so mm-hmm. preventative maintenance on it so that you know you probably you probably could have got that out of like AutoZone. they didn't have the right size so i had uh-huh. to work like the this is the correct diameter just like slip over the end of it right i checked it because i was like man do i really have to order this i can go do it today which yeah. i hate it's like every small part that you need never available today or never available locally. Same thing with those wheel studs for the GX also. I like looking at the STI behind you. <laughs> you mean that one? Yeah. I haven't <laughs> seen it in forever. Me neither. <laughs> is it still on the black wheels? It is. The gold ones, man, I've been saying that for a while. Dang S2000. If the S2000 was done, then I'd be able to like focus on, on that. I'll come up. I'll bring, I'll bring you my Muga wheels and I'll take the gold ones. Neither will fit any car. Those Mugans won't clear my brakes. No, I don't care about for your Subaru. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the gold wheels w- won't clear your fenders. Yeah, catch 22 here. You right. <laughs> I, I definitely want, I want to put the gold wheels back on. And I also want to. Um, gonna hate me for this I just want to color match the hood but I don't want to paint it I want to have a I don't know I'm not trying to the, turn to the side that has the stock hood right yeah this is a star I wouldn't color match that one that carbon hood what's that 
I wouldn't call I wouldn't color match the carbon hood. Sort of want to. But I can't do it. I, it has to be reversible. Ain't no way. I get I, I don't know how how would they like vinyl like PPF it and then paint over the PPF? <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I wonder if they make color matched vinyl, because that'd be dope. It won't be an exact match, but like. I know, it being on that flat surface on top of the car, I don't know. Maybe close enough? I forget what that hood even looks like now. Which one? The carbon the one? The carbon one, yeah. Forged on the front, 3K tool in the rear. Doesn't have a hood scoop. It has like the, the plug for it, so I could put the hood scoop on there, but it doesn't have a hood scoop anymore. That hood scoop looked crazy at speed because it would. It would do that because there's no intercooler underneath it. Right. So it was just air would get under there and like try to pull it off of the car. Jeez. <laughs> when you have the intercooler there, it's like there's a pressure difference there. So the scoop just forces air there. And like obviously all the air can't pass through the intercooler at the same time. No. So that that pressure like helps support the hood scoop at speed. But since there's nothing there and no impedance. All the all the oncoming air just goes straight into the engine bay and like through the down the near the transmission and out underneath the car. So it's literally oh. air just lifting it up. How long have you been uh, front mounted? Since 2018, it was as soon as I got the Voltex front bumper, I went front mount at the same time. I'm pretty sure it's 2018. Were we even so, talking back then? Yeah, because... Yeah, yeah, we were talking way back in, like, 2014. No. You, we, we were talking before the, the STI went Voltex. Yeah. Because it was Georgia, Import Alliance, and the car was on Gram lights and everything then. The white Gram lights. Yep. My car... You have the silver car that was wrapped white. The original. Yeah, but... The original AV1, Doug. Didn't, that yeah. time, though, it was silver at Drew's booth. Wrapped right? silver? Or... No, it was just silver. It was the paint. And then, like, the next year after that, it was wrapped with the advance on it. I thought it was wrapped the whole time. I don't think I've ever seen that car silver. Am I making that up? Yeah. <laughs> it, had the, I it had the rear over fenders, though, right? Yeah, when I sold it, it was silver, remember? On the CCW. Yeah. You're half gone. <laughs> Long time. Yeah. It was a lot of cars ago. That was... BMW, Integra, Hatch, White Four Door, Black Coupe, Blue SI. It's been a few. How much do you regret letting go of the first S2000? The first one, the. That one that we're talking about. A good bit. That one was that was the longest I had a car. I had that one for three years. That's wild. Only <laughs> three years. I know, and it was almost paid off. That's the shortest I've ever had a car. <laughs> yeah. The shortest I had a car was... Uh, 24 hours. A week. A week. <laughs> yeah. I sold that one yellow one in a week. I don't know, man. The... The one that really does, just due to the niceness factor of where it was at at the time, was that 07 blue one I had. I had the OEM hardtop. I did the APR front bumper. That's a good Yeah, with the spoon Perfect. fenders, the J's exhaust. I had the 
NSX spec TE 37s on it. In bronze. Yeah, I mean they weren't the original bronze, but yeah, I had them redone. That car was one of my favorites. I remember that car. It's a good and car. I had that at the same time I had the navy blue Porsche. Somehow I had a I had like a vehicle loan on that one. On the Porsche. On the S two thousand. Because remember, I traded the black BMW. Yep. To uh, Ryan, Ryan Clark, whatever, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. Him. He swapped, I tra- those, right? No. Uh-huh. You ended up buying his S two thousand too, or swapping with him or something? Mm-mm. Yeah, I traded that BMW for his S two thousand and that Triumph Daytona six seventy five R motorcycle. Yeah. And that was a very nice bike and I sold that bike and I paid off like all my debts. And then even with that, I had enough money to buy a Voltex. And at the time the Voltex was like 1850 shipped. Which is wild because there's no way. Yeah, that was a type two. That's that what was I like, that was like the third or, or yeah, that was the third one I bought. I got a type two and that's type two for an SC thousand. With the Jay's version or whatever. Yeah. And I paid I paid use what you paid for yours, Brandon. Yeah. And it was in stock. I remember when S two thousand parts, S two thousand Voltex parts were always in stock. And I bought one because of that. And then I I literally like I would base my build on if parts were in stock. That's wild. Because I wasn't gonna do that waiting game. I did. I just it's like because I don't know one, am I going to be alive? Two, am I still going? <laughs> two, am more, I still am I still going to have this car? That's that's more accurate than anything else. Will I still have the car for you? That's yeah. more accurate than anything else. Yeah. This car, I, was, I don't. I was playing a long game, man. Huh? I was playing a long game because yeah, the Voltex diffuser for me took six months. I would wait, however long. I have to wait for a uh, for a V mount like what's on your your car, but the V mount doesn't go with my build really. No, yeah. those so it was six months for the diffuser, and then it arrived cracked, and then <laughs> somehow got a replacement in two weeks. That was just happened to be in the states. Of course it did. And then the front bumper took nine months, and they accidentally it only it took nine months because they accidentally forgot somebody else's order. And then I had to rush mine in. So my did my you do order, all the order at like one time? No. So mm. I just did it as like I saved up enough for mm. for the parts. And so um uh snail performance had a hawkeye. They had two hawkeyes actually. And um Sally got my Voltex bumper and then I got hers because the the orders got shipped or they dropped her order or whatever. So I had to wait a little bit extra for my front bumper and right. then the, the v-mount wing took nine months also and then the skirts just happened to be in stock and got there in two weeks there's a set there's a set of carbon fiber ones right now for sale the guy wants like 14 hours yeah i didn't know voltex made those in carbon uh, i don't know i would like to have another set of the yagi side diffusers yep i told drew he's this is forever ago but I told Drew, I was like, if he, he had a, he said he still had like one pair. And I was like, I'll take them. I just don't know why I can get them. And he said, it's, I'm not in a rush. They're just here at the shop. Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen anything. At I'm shop. sure they're, I'm sure they're gone. I have, no uh, how do you attach those? Do you just drill into the car? Self tap? <laughs> that hurts. Because I've got some, if you want, I've got some carbon skirt extensions. Just cut them to fit and then self tap them in. Where do you where'd you get those from? Had them for a long time. I think I got them when I got the skirts, the Voltex skirts. But then I didn't like how. So like right now, it it doesn't look right without a front splitter, and it's being really picky because they're like five millimeters tall or so, five ten millimeters tall. Uh-huh. But if I put if I stack those onto the Voltex skirts. Then the side skirts hang like 10 millimeters lower than the front of the car and it's oh. no, noticeable to me but yeah. if i had a front splitter then it would all line up so i all never right. put it on and because of that 
So, hey, man, when you come up, then... I'll be in the truck, though, probably. You don't have to be in the truck. You can be in whatever you want, boo-boo. That's true, but I'd have to go get in line before I head up there. I'll wait. <laughs> and I was like, man, maybe I can go up th- like this coming up weekend. But I was like, one, I haven't mentioned it to him yet. And then Kendall has to work this weekend. So I was like, eh. And whenever you want to head out, we can do the coilovers. And then, I mean, the sooner the better, because then you get my coilovers. And then you get your car lowered. Dude, that's going to be a process. Because I'll have to... Roll the fenders. Roll the fenders, relocate the rear tabs. Install the coilovers. I kind of want to go get a. My buddy has an HKS exhaust, the HKS high power single. Mm. You don't He's have any a... on that car, huh? Mm-mm. I really like the stock exhaust. Yeah, it's oh, I'm gonna go pick up Saturday. I'm probably gonna. Oh well, I can't. Well, hmm. well, Saturday. I just was talking to this kid earlier. I'll probably go buy his uh, test pipe from him. Just do test pipe on the stock exhaust. I was thinking about it. You really you can't notice a difference though. Really? Mm. And it's kind of nice. My car is just so like stock. Unpainted. Yeah. Everything you're doing gonna do is well, no, not the fender roll. Fender rolls where you make you really mad. That's where I get mad. I just don't, I know I'm gonna crack the paint on the fenders on the front. I know it. And that hurts. So what's the move, Doug? I'm not as good as Mr. Sexy or whatever his name is on Instagram. <laughs> He's really damn good. And he was just here a few months ago. I should have paid him to do the car. Dang, we, we were supposed to get him up here too. Then you could have brought the car up. Mm-hmm. Yep. He was just here. He did like minimum 10 cars is what he had. So. Yeah. When's the next time he's coming back? You got to get ten more cars minimum or something, which that's a that's a lot of money, dude. I think he charges like three fifty for the all four or something. Where does he live? California. Of course. Yep. Wow. I'm fine. I'm fine with doing the rears, but the fronts. It just I don't know what it is, dude. I don't know. It's a pain in my butt. Feel it. Oh, I don't man. know. Oh, well. Good. That one dude, uh, oh. remember? do you remember that I sent you the picture of that guy selling the OEM suspension with the Swift Springs and the spring was out of the perch? Yeah. I messaged him and I was like, hey man, one of those springs is not in right. And he read it and he didn't say anything. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to help you out. I kind of want to get those because that's a really nice ride height. I think and you're it's... just around the bush of what you really want to do. Olin's was I would I've never had, I've never had anything that nice. Me neither. I lied. Yes, the SCI has like the SCI. Yeah, what are you talking about? Feels sucks. Four four two. Yeah, they're fantastic <laughs> ones. I like got them to work. Yeah. What what was the problem with those again? Everything. Okay. The springs were. It's been fun, guys. See ya. I'm just kidding. Right. Everything was wrong with them. The f- they sent me springs that were too long for the rear. Probably too long for the front, too, but... Wait, you had clearance issues, right? Man, it was a nightmare with those. Uh, the springs in the rear were too long, so they wouldn't fit because the, the offset of the wheel. The wheel was literally touching the coil. Right. Yeah, I It's like that. the fitment in the rear of the STI is so tight because it's 18 by 10, right? Yeah. So where the, you know, the coil over, like, threaded body. Yep. And then you have the... Um, and then you have the, the lock collar and then the spring up here. So the, the wheel would fit right in that thread of the area. <laughs> your, your hand motions are making, <laughs> making you disappear, bro. Terrible. So oh, as I was saying, the, <laughs> yeah, so the wheel fit in that threaded area, the coilover. Yeah. But then the spring was too long, so it was like the wheel was hitting that. It was like a week-long process of trying to get these things to fit. And then on top of that, the um, the remote reservoir mounts 
the worst design things I've ever seen in my life. Because you put them on the rears and you like clamp them together and whatever, <clears throat> and they would just swing around on their own. Like the, you couldn't get them tight enough to where the the reservoir wouldn't move. So then I just took like threw away their clamps altogether and then just like um, got uh, hose clamps like large hose clamps mm. and then just put like a rubber isolator around the reservoir and then around the hose clamp to keep everything like to prevent everything from getting scratched and then just put the um the reservoir like below the the lip of the rim like the inner lip of the rim and it doesn't rotate at all now it doesn't move like that's that's all they had to do they spent extra money on this mount that didn't work it's like clearance issues everywhere and I like grinded the mount down and everything because I really wanted to use their mounts because they they looked decent and like no amount of grinding was going to take care of how much this thing moved. So especially on track where everything's jostling around, mm -hmm. like you could hear it like tapping the wheel. And so I just hose clamped it down lower and now it's like all the freedom in the world, like all the space. And then um, I don't remember if it was the front or the rear. I had to cut the oh, elbows on the front like the lower um the lower coilover mount where the remote reservoir came out they like put right. a slot section like this in the bottom of the mount where the hose came out and like it was weight it rode way too high so like as you lowered the the car to get there like a proper ride height the hose would just like bottom out on the bottom of the mount because they didn't make the the bottom open they made it just a an oval so I had to cut out the bottom of the mount so the hose would like drop below it and then the ride height could be set properly. It was a whole thing. That makes no sense. And, oh, and on top of that, the something's weird about the um the uh uh upper camera plates because I I had to fight the car to get to get the same amount of camera I had before. Which That's is nice. Like, That's nice that you had them at the top. What's that? You're you got those top camera plates, I guess, that you can slide. Yeah, so I had to set the, I had to set the, um, the camera bolt to max, and then like fine tune it at the, right. at the hat. But it was it was a that whole thing was a, a mission. It's crazy because I had their four four ones on the car already set up perfectly. They were just right. too, couldn't put new springs on there because they weren't valve for stiffer springs. So I went the four four twos, and then essentially should have been like drop in a drop in fitment, right? Just better coilovers, like the same brand and everything. It was a nightmare. But finally, I don't, understand, I don't understand why it had to be such a nightmare. I don't know what changed either, but it was yeah, it was a mission for sure. But now it's all good. It was you, just really annoying. Do you plan on doing stuff to the Supra? Eventually, probably just. Uh, I really want wheels for it. I want VBSs, but yeah, no way the weight their their wait times are ridiculous i don't want this i don't want te's or advance for it like everybody else has done i still would really like some lms on my car yeah i want Jeez. porsche fitment porsche fitment on the super is my goal yeah so it's gonna have to be like i don't know i might do like some apex wheels on it or something apexes look nice yep they have they're very concaved yeah I want to do that, but like a, maybe Apex or CCW, something that I can get like a custom offset and actually like give it the Porsche fitment that I'm after, you know? Mm -hmm. GT3 fitment is fantastic. Like modded Porsche fitment, like for track Porsches, it just looks insane to me. And I love it where it's like a fat tire, modest size wheel. So it's like an 18, probably they downgrade from a 19 or a 20. Yeah. And just a fat tire and like tight fitment. And does, that su does that super come with Brembo's? Yeah, they're not branded Brembo, but I think there are Brembo's on the front. I figured. Not that it's like anything crazy. Because... Isn't that, is that whole front clip? That's like a plastic, isn't it? Um, the front fan, the hood is not. The so the hood is like this giant clamshell. Yeah. And then um, the. What like the hood comes down and then there's just these little fender pieces behind the front wheels that those are plastic. And there's not and there's not like a you wouldn't have to roll. There, it's literally just a 
now it's a clamshell, so it's already and the so the front has tons of clearance because the fender is the hood, right? And it's just sheet metal, like sheet metal thickness, so it's all good. And then the rears are already like there's nothing there, it's factory rolled or whatever. Like there's just nothing to roll. What exhaust do people run on it? Do people put on it? They'll do um, what's it called, Army Tricks, or they they make a Tome for it, which is really damn loud. Mm-mm. So like it doesn't sound. I, I don't know. I don't. I think it's too loud. And then they do. Um, I don't. I wouldn't want that kind of look on that car. No, it, it it's, a it's very too classic, nice. In my yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of like why I haven't changed the exhaust on the S two thousand. It just looks so nice with the yeah. OEM exhaust. So saying, when you had the picture up of, of my AP one from before, yeah, stock exhaust looks so good on there. I love it. It's so quiet, especially um, on the AP two bumper. Just I don't know. I think Acropovic or whatever they have one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then like all the expensive, really overpriced stuff. When the, the best, I'm sure HKS has a nice one, don't they? Yeah, I think the best though is just a downpipe on the stock exhaust because the stock exhaust sounds oh, great. Yeah. yeah. And then the downpipe just adds the the little bit increased loudness or whatever, and and then you still get to retain like the sport mode thing where you can shut off half of the exhaust and just have it a little bit quieter, and then just open up both sides if you want to. Does, does Drew still has his, doesn't he? Stock exhaust. Well, Supra. Yep. Does this have stock exhaust? Yep. The, the current one does. It doesn't even have a downpipe, but the first white one that he had had a downpipe and stock exhaust, and then retained all the functionality where you can put it in normal mode and it would quiet down, or just leave it in sport mode and it'd just be loud all the time. But, I mean, have you heard his? Page? I've never even seen it. The first one was, um, was like, the perfect level of loudness. It just sounded aggressive all the time. Yeah. And then you can close up the valve and it'd be all good. And so, I mean, it doesn't need an exhaust, honestly. The stock exhaust looks good, yeah. functions just fine, and um, and sounds good. Sounds good, looks good, functions. Right. <clears throat> so I'm probably not going to change the exhaust on that car. Just probably do a downpipe eventually. Definitely a tune, tune and downpipe. I wonder so, if uh, we one time went to. I don't think you were there. No. It was a Southern Fresh Meat, the last one I went to. Southern? Oh, yeah, yeah okay. And uh, we rolled with, like, a group of people. And this one guy had a Supra, and it sounded nuts. Mm. I think he was on LMs. I can't remember, but good grief, dude. They do make off-the-shelf LMs, too. And those off-the-shelf ones are, like, uh, the fitment isn't that crazy on them. His looked really, it looked good. Probably put it was, space on it. It's pretty damn low. The flat face LMs, I mean, it has a nice lip and everything, but I want like the Porsche BBSs, you know what I'm saying? Concave yeah. spokes, your like brake. Like an E88 wheel or something? Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Center locks. Ooh. You're not center. You'd have to change so much crap. I know. No, I just have to change the hubs. They make center, center lock adapters, but matter of fact, they'll probably be like, pretty easy on the super to do center locks if you wanted because it really? doesn't have yeah so you just like uh, you ever seen the center lock adapters oh you have wheel bolts the super has wheel bolts uh, so the center lock adapters are just like um you put studs in and then you slide the you know the, mm-hmm. the center locking thing in there and then that has its own studs mm-hmm. and then that fits into the back of the wheel or whatever you know, the back of the wheel doesn't have holes that go all the way through on a center lock wheel. It has, like, the little nubs, or the little pocket. Slide all that in, and you're good to go. The adapter is not that crazy. There was a company, as a matter of fact, called um, Center Lock USA or something like that. I was going to be like, Center Locks R Us. Something like that. Or Kaizen Center Lock or something like that. Do you mm. remember them? It used to be on Instagram a lot. And they had, like, WRXs and stuff with center locks, but... It was a whole conversion thing. I wonder what the torque the torque spike would have to be pretty crazy, right? Now you got to make me make me look it up because it is crazy. Hang seeing, on. seeing like some Japanese dudes just like hanging on a bar that's like <laughs> twelve feet long. Has anyone done center lock on us on the Subarus? Yeah, this Kaizen. They, they had uh, it down. 
They uh, so max torque spec for a for a Porsche center lock wheel, five hundred foot pounds. And it's, there's there's a whole sequence too. That's the max torque. So it says tighten the lug to a, to 443 foot pounds, back it off 60 degrees, return to 443, back it off again, and back to 443. <laughs> this is a whole technique to like seat it. Because you're only using one, right? Yeah. So I assume you you get it to seat in the like the studs in the pocket of the wheel. You back Would it you, off. But yeah. you probably. To have that much torque, though, the wheel would have to be on the ground. Yeah, and they use they use like a torque multiplier too on it, so they um, couldn't do that with the wheel in the air. But wouldn't it make sense the wheel in the air so it has the room to move? That's probably why they back it off a little bit because you can't. I mean, with that much torque, you can't have it just in the air. Jesus Christ! Imagine yeah. you just you just strip one. It's like oh, now what? In it the wrong way or something. Yeah, you're cutting. I wonder if they, like both sides of the car tighten in the same direction, or is one side the opposite, like reverse threaded in in one? Because you imagine you just forget one day and you like over tighten. Oh, the wrong dude. Thing. And now you got to cut your wheel off. It'd be a bad track day. Yep, hundred percent. That's why you never see center lock horses at the track very often. I think. Or at least they don't change their tires at the track. This one's center lock. What's the torque spec say on it? Either they have it written on the on the lug. This one's it's not that good. Some, some newton meters. No, oh, no, but I miss mine. Tell you that. Wonder how it's doing these days. I don't know, man, but I miss it. I think about that car a lot. If I still had it, I would have taken some of the decals off. I yeah. probably would have left a lot of the decals off besides the Flying Lizard itself. Yeah. And then just enjoyed it like that. But I was too nervous with the wedding coming up, that ticking noise it would randomly do. But then the guy drove it 11 hours back to Oklahoma, so. <laughs> just fine. Yeah. He never had one problem. And then he let me know beforehand. He goes, hey, I'm about to sell it um, to for something for with business he was doing something with a, a business opportunity yeah and uh he was yeah. like I, I didn't know if you wanted to if i if he asked me if i wanted to buy it back and i was like dude i wish that's a good car yeah i thought about it but i had the silver s2000 with the red interior and the white wheels and i was like well i wasn't contemplating was it uh i sold I sold it for twenty three five. Dang, it's a low mileage and everything. I don't remember how much. Mm. It was under a hundred, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was eighty nine thousand. That was a cool car, dude. It was. It was really cool, man. It was nice to have something that was like fast. Yeah, like with torque. I mean, that thing like. I it definitely drove it uh, the first time. Yeah, it and definitely it drives weird. Huh? Like they they feel weird compared to the S two thousand just because all the weight in the back. Mm -hmm. But it also felt it felt very planted. But I also felt driving that. It kind of felt like lost because I don't know anything about it. You know what I mean? Like, oh. huh? didn't have it long enough to get used to it well also when i got it it spent a month total basically at shops why wow, i forgot because the first place i took it i wanted them to i figured since all they did was deal with porsche race cars literally yeah. they literally could hear that little ticking noise it would do randomly and the i figured a guy who'd been there for ever who has worked on porsches forever would be like oh that's this and just drive it and figure it out or you know whatever whatever but then i felt like they lied to me and they were like they changed the oil and they were like yeah we found tons of metal pieces i was like there's no way not this car remember maybe. yeah maybe because the guy drove it 11 hours back home just fine and the Dude. car is still alive to this day yeah there was there was no way that was from this car there's just no way 
the dude had I mean, when I got that car, he had like a stack of stuff like this. I mean, it was like everything was from the Porsche dealership. Yep. He had the IMS bearing was done, all this stuff. I'm like, there's no way that was from this car. There's just there's just no way. Those chunks of metal. The car runs way too good. It didn't do there was nothing. And um and then I took it to a different shop and it sat there for a few weeks. And I was like, could it be like a, a lifter that's sticking? because the car didn't get driven that much and these like to be driven and they were like oh yeah maybe and then eventually they were like hey we'd rather take it to our other shop where our porsche mechanic is and i was like why have why haven't we said that two like two ago. yeah literally i was like why you know i thought we were gonna do whatever and then like this i made like a list i was like what if i just replaced this kind of things that would have anything to do with all that and it was like seven grand and i was like i can't because everything is motor out yep i remember that i remember talking about this a long time ago yeah and a buddy of mine who works solely on porsches like this or like that he was asking me a bunch of questions he goes did they ask you any of these questions i was like no nothing he goes i wouldn't i would take it somewhere else immediately mm. he was like he would even ask me like uh randomly the car would drip oil yeah, and it ended up, he was like, where's it dripping at? And I was like, back. TV or something like that, right? Well, I was like, back left or something. And he goes, is it about a foot in and directly under something? He asked me, and I was like, yeah. And he goes, that's the air oil separator. Yep, PCV system. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, he knew, like, he asked me, he was yep. that specific on things. And he goes, they didn't mention that? And I was like, well, they mentioned it, but they said possible. And he goes, well, if it's dripping right there where I'm asking, that's definitely what that is. And he said, the problem is on the nine, the nine elevens, you have to drop the motor some to get to the top of that. On the box, the Boxer S is really the car I think to go with because you can get to the top of the motor. Mm. The Boxer S is sweet. I actually, when my dad had that that one, that was fun to drive. It was an automatic, but it was very fun to drive. Yeah, he had one. Yeah, that was. The interior feel, like, you don't have anything behind you, obviously. It felt very, I don't know, it was cool. It was kind of like S2000, but yep. power, but had power. The Boxer S is probably, I would look into one of those, you know, if you were to look for a Porsche, because it's relatively cheaper. And it yeah. literally, you can get to the top of that motor for certain mm -hmm. things. So, I don't know. I know what kind of Porsche I want, but yeah, <laughs> I should have jumped in when I could. Because now it's yeah, now now, it's... now they're pricey. The only the only car I'd get rid of this S two thousand four would be like an old air cooled. I wouldn't. Well, I want a nine nine seven GT three so bad, but I could have jumped in on it when uh before buying a Supra like that. And the problem is when I bought the Supra, the nine nine sevens were starting to go up, so they were like plus 70,000 at that point like they were on the downward trajectory and I was waiting for it to hit like that 65 60,000 dollar mark because they were right at 70 and I, I'm like kicking myself for just not doing the 70 mm -hmm. I mean it, they appreciate it like crazy and then uh now we're now this is where we are no I don't regret the super at all but no, the super sick dude I always forget you have it yeah, the um, or you could sell a super and just build a sweet 240. We talked about that too, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to like, I was, about to, I was about to have this reaction of like, what in the world are you talking about? And then I remember we totally had a long conversation. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what was going on that day. That's why I sent you a couple of badass 240s on Facebook. Man, life doesn't make sense right now for a lot of reasons. And that was just like a, probably because you got a whole fleet. No, it wasn't. It was like that was a. I don't know what I was thinking that day. Like it sounded like a fantastic idea. <laughs> it's because it is. It's, I don't know if it is. Your I, favorite car at the at the at, remember at Week Fest was that two forty. The S fifteen, the midnight purple one. Yes. Because that car, there's no. I can't. He's. I can't. I can afford half of that car if I sold the Zebra. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of money in that car. Dude, that car, that, that, that car was nuts. That 
car literally had no faults. That, and I'm critical about cars, and that car had no faults that I could see. It's a real hit to see a car that nice. It is. It looks... If it didn't have, like, the... Like, a good hit, and then, like, a real hit to, you like, your just personal well-being and, like, your wallet. <laughs> Because, like, you go to these shows, and you're like, yeah, man, my shit's nice. And then there's something like that, and you're like, why am I here? Well, here's, here's the thing. If that car was tamed down, like, it didn't have all the stickers and everything like that, you could, you'd could you believe that Nissan built this car. Like, Nissan did the RV swap in it yeah. and everything. Like, if the piping and stuff like that, the titanium, I think it had titanium piping, right? From yeah, how was that car legal? The car couldn't have been legal. Nobody knows. Nobody ever knows. It's okay. probably like registered under a 240SX or something like that. Which is the other thing. I don't want a car that I'm technically not allowed to drive until I'm 80 years old or whatever. I yeah. don't have that kind of time. Or you got to pay a house mortgage for an R34? Man, for a car that's like pretty mid. Yeah. Like you're just driving around and everybody's like, oh, it's an R34. And you're like, yeah, I'm driving a house. Dude. And And like, I don't. It does nothing really well, right? It's I don't know. I don't know. I know. I, I saw that one in person at Southern Fresh. We rode. That was he was one of the guys that rode with us. Wait, which one? It was a. This one was a R34. It was I want to say like midnight purple color. Okay. And supposedly the guy like worked for Honda or something or worked for Nissan. I can't remember. But super nice All dude. Stock. Huh? All stock. All stock. His name was like a. He was a tall Asian dude. Like really nice teeth. Yeah, pretty good teeth. Uh, what was his name? Um, dang, I haven't been around car for for a while, so I don't remember his name. Does he have like a two forty? Not a two forty. A Z as well, like an old Z. An orange one. Bueller. 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 Was it, is it Bueller? You, no, that's from a movie. No, no, I, I think this, that's what, that's the guy, he works at Nissan Corporate here. He might. Tennessee. Oh, I don't know. I thought he worked in Georgia. Uh, I don't know. I Anyways, have no idea. Like, i never seen that guy. I don't know. But he was like, nice, and the car was nice, and I was like, Jesus, dude. That was back when I had, that was when I had yellow. Oh, yeah. F Fender Flare yellow. Yeah. There's a guy here with a Millennium Jade M Spec Nerf, and it is flawless. Like what? What is it? Uh, R34 Millennium oh. Jade M Spec Nerf with like whole catalog of HKS parts Jesus. for the engine, and then whole catalog, whole catalog of Nismo parts on the exterior. Like it has the Z Tune fenders, Z Tune hood. It has Nismo LMGTs. Like, fantastic car. It's just not worth the money, dude. It's not. 100%. You can get so many better cars for the same price. Or or less. Like, if if I'm on a mission and I had that much money to spend on the car, R34 would not be it. Let's be reasonable. Buy a Porsche for a lot cheaper. GT3, RS, whatever. For a lot cheaper. And have way more fun. The only thing that really pops into my mind if I talk about like having like an abundant money for a car, I yeah. immediately go like my number one for whatever reason is going to be the air cooled Porsche, some sort of model that's Singer, Singer built Porsche. Dude, that's like half a million dollars. You said if money was. No, nah, I would. I wouldn't go that. I wouldn't be that nice. You. I mean the. It, You'd never lose that money. No, but also I would. I want one like how Magnus has. Like he drives them and like beats on beats on them and like they've got like when they have like bumps and bruises on them, he's like it's just character, it's just patina, it's just. And I'm just like, dude, that's so cool. Like <laughs> he can say that because somebody will give him another Porsche pretty easy. Like he can afford. Oh well, he's yeah. But like I like I like his styling. I like how he'll like have a a white car and the front bumper's orange, the rear bumper's orange, and like he'll do these decals and then like he does like it's just like, yeah, it's so I don't know. There's like so much character, but that one video of him driving around like L.A. I remember and just that. just hearing that car, 
it's not fast, but it's like just hearing it. It's like there's... it's like an SD thousand. It has the same character. Yes, I'm, I'm aiming for the Magnus Walker character on red. Yeah, the black front bumper, black trunk. It's it's like it's not that you don't care. It's oh, yeah. that's the style, right? Like that's that what is, I want to do. It's like you because that was my whole thing. Like front bumper and black trunk, black the wing on it, but you put the you know the red badges on there, so it looks like oh, I did this on purpose, kind of. Thing. Yeah. And that's the whole like the Magnus Walker style is, is what I'm going for, and track car too but i think there's a i think it's an underrated style to have a purpose purposely mismatched paint scheme you know i think i think it's cool dude speaking of that what the you got a lot to do on red man i don't know don't remind me what are you but doing why I, I don't know yeah i do have a lot to do on. i literally have first time and, in my life and the dm meets coming up that'd be sick if all that stuff was on there it's it is possible. Well, it the is. trunk is not. I don't know what you're going to do about the trunk. What do you mean? Just wrap it black. Oh, okay. Trunk's you can do that. Yeah, I just have to straighten out that corner. So the lock mechanism on the S2000 trunk. I'm I'm actually like nervous about swapping that. It's easy. No way to get in the trunk once it's. Like imagine I lock it and then like I close it and then the that it doesn't open. Then what do I do? <laughs> you don't. You don't do. You go spoon hard top is what you do. You can never open up the trunk again. Uh-uh. It's easy. I've done it. How do you do what? How do you open up a trunk once it's locked in an S2000? Like, if you can't. Oh, that's it. not easy. I don't know. You just cut a big hole in the trunk? I don't know. Literally my only I option. still don't I know don't. how you'd even open it, but yeah. I don't. I don't I have, I have no clue what to do in that situation. Uh, you drill out the lock like how do i even if you were to drill it i still don't know there's got to be like a let me back up i don't know how the mechanism would fail so in my mind this is all black magic on how the mechanism would fail but it's easy the... swapping everything over though it's what it's easy swapping the locks around oh yeah, yeah i'm not worried about that i'm just like swap the lock over and everything and then like something fails I don't know what because I haven't looked at the mechanism yet. Something yeah. I can't get in there. Like, what's Plan B? <laughs> Never open it up again. It's just a nice black trunk. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like, it's, a cha- you- it's a chassis mounted trunk. <laughs> yeah, how do I get in there again? <laughs> Two big hole saw bits that are like this big. For real. And then what? Like once I then you just then you just snip the cable. Well, yeah, you just pull them, or you put like big poxy glass circles in there, and you can just like see in the trunk. See in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm mildly nervous about swapping a trunk. Nah. I did it. I've done it. Swapping the locks and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not. It's not hard. Is the okay? My other question is, the latch on the S2000 is is it on the car or on the trunk? So does the trunk just have a striker, or does it have the actual like lock? The trunk mechanism? just the trunk just has the the hook, and then the mechanism is on the trunk lid itself. That that goes like you got the hook like this, and then the hook goes clink into the trunk into the body of the car. Into the body of the car. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the mechanism is on the trunk. So yeah, there's a malfunction on that. Rip. Yeah, I don't know what you do. How do I get into an S2000 trunk? If you would have to take the soft top out. How do I do that? Oh, you can do that, though. Yeah, you'd have to take the soft top out and then all the plastics. All the plastics and then the soft top. Which you would take out from the cockpit anyway. Like, you don't yeah. do that from the trunk. Dang. Uh-uh. Yeah. Well. Then you'd have a gutted S2000. It was gutted when they changed the soft top at that point, but... Tank that that it's a little nerve wracking. I'm not gonna lie. We could do the bumper, dude. I just don't. Grab the Tacoma up. We'll do the bumper. We'll do the coilovers in the bumper. I want to order coilovers, man. I just want some new ones. What are you saying? The R2D2s are not good enough for you. I just don't have patience. Patience for what? 
patience. If you drive up, you don't need patience because you'll actually be like helping me. I gotta be patient for three hours. Three and a <laughs> half, four hours. <laughs> I've done it twice. It's just I could get some nice function form type twos for eight forty three, man. Or you can get some nice R two D twos for free. That we can't adjust. You can totally adjust them. Not the height. You don't need to go any lower than I have them. <laughs> what if I need to go up? So that's between you and Jesus. <laughs> that's between you and the Lord. That's what I I'm scared of. Up. I think it can go up. It just can't. You can't go any lower. I think. No, yeah, yeah. No, it, you can't go any lower because the the scrape marks are on top. Are on, like they're visible, right? So you can definitely go higher. You just can't go lower. The messed up threads are above the the lower cup. So don't slam it and you'll be all right. You're pretty low as it is, aren't you? I don't intend to go any lower. I mean, that's a pretty good height you're at. Dude, I don't want the RE30s, man. God dang. The what? Uh, oh, I thought you were talking about tires. Just did a little switcheroo on me. Had the... No, those RE30s are... Man. I want some hands. I want some TEs, damn it. I wish, I wish I had a job when those TEs were available. I would have immediately jumped on those. Like that was something. Job or no job, <laughs> you probably should have grabbed those. I, I, but yeah, but I couldn't because I just didn't. I don't know. I shouldn't have. I, I did the. I made the right. Hindsight's twenty twenty. But dang, I miss those wheels. I still have them. I don't know. Why I say I miss them. I just can't <laughs> run because the tires are literally corded on them. Yeah, I got to go back to that look for sure. I know. And then I was looking at... Uh... Do you have the file for the, the banner? Don't you have a file or something of like the logo or something of the banner? I don't remember. Did I send it to you already? Dude, I have no idea. Oh, no, I probably sent it to you. I can't think right now. Because I was going to say if, I, if, we, if we did... I could send that to Andy, and I'm sure you could make it. I need to make an off-road version, too. That's what I'm saying. Just a sticker. Mountains in the background instead of the flag. Like the old TRD logo. But uh, You could do, like, uh... Yeah, but instead of the flag, just have the mountain go up the side and then over the top of it. Yep, other way. Yep, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you need to put a fishing hook on the front, Bill. You're out of your mind. <laughs> it's because I'm white. That was <laughs> terrible. Jeez. Do we have a lot to do? I do. I really do. You've got a lot to do. I really do. Fortunately, <laughs> it's becoming my problem. Huh? I said, unfortunately, it's becoming my problem. It is not becoming your problem at all. I just, I, I can do the front bumper, but I don't, I don't want to do the front bumper first. Get all the mechanicals out of the way. How long did it take you to do the offset ball joints? Because that's a, I, I can do this in like a couple of days, honestly. But I just, I need a couple of days of the offset ball joints. I did in like thirty minutes. I can, I've got those two. I got to do them in thirty minutes. But I'm pretty sure my toe is off. I feel like the toe is off. I just feel like, I just really feel like it's off. I can check mine too. Like I can, do, I just need, a, I need a couple of days of like an actual couple of days. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can I do it a couple days. I hear you. But I just need a couple of days to have the problem. Uh, I know. It would be nice. It would uh, literally not the quilt without in like a couple of hours, but like Well you do the quilt pullovers and the bumper in the same time. I can do the bumpers by myself. That's easy. The coilovers are easy too. I just don't want to do it by myself. <laughs> It's on principle right now. You should be like, There's hey, yo, no dad. It's one of those, like, it's going to be hot outside. I don't know. Well, you're going to put it in the garage anyway. Oh, the sauna in there. It would be better in the, in the garage for sure. Better floor. Better floor for sure. Mm. What did you get? You got Owens, didn't you? 
Saki by Mullins. See, dude, maybe I, I should just get those, man. <laughs> you, you're being real disrespectful to the R2-D2s right now. I don't appreciate it. No, I'm, I'm genuinely, I'm being like you because I don't want to do this more than one time. <laughs> I do not like doing coilovers. You've done it on your past. Every, seasons. all cars, and it's <laughs> not fun. It's never fun, but it's not hard. Yeah, I just don't want them, man. Every time I adjust it, and then I'm like, all right, that's measured perfect. That's measured perfect. I set the car down. It's sitting like this. And I'm like, what is happening? And then I jack it back up, and I do this. And then it's like the other side. And I'm like, oh, man. Then I'm back up. Split the difference. I'm like, this ground is as level as I got. It's in my garage. Yep. Did you the jump on the other side? You got to settle it, so you got to jump on the oh, side. Too. I was doing it. I was doing it all, buddy. Still looking like a low rider. Just front was like this, rear was like that, rear was like that, front was like th yeah. It's, it's... I have a surprise for you. What? Damn! Don't sound so excited about it. I, I literally have a surprise. You're like Owens for you. <laughs> you and one friend. Okay. Not quite Olin's, but I was going to act like actually surprise you with this, but might as well just show it to you since we're recording now. Uh, yeah. Hey. Is that real? <laughs> is, that, is that real or is it a, is it a rep? Just kidding. <laughs> a rep. Yeah, it's fake rep carbon fiber. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Kept it secret for so long. I shouldn't have showed it to you. I should just. Yes. So R two D two. I mean, I'm not gonna send it to you. You gotta come up and get it. But yeah, I'll get that. Where do I put that? Should I put it on the back? I don't know. Put it anywhere. Does it have holes in the front? A bumper? It's got the caps in it. Thankfully, and I ain't messing with those suckers. Because once you pull one of those caps out, and then that piece falls in the bumper. You got to take the bumper off, hold that piece in, push that piece in. You're killing me right now. You're killing uh, me right now. Yeah, I ain't taking that bumper off. I still got all the OEM under tray, everything. Uh, That's fine. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, first, Mugen, the Mugen lip, taking that off, that would be a real problem. You don't have to take the lip off. Yeah, it's bolted through the under tray. Why would they do that? It's on there. Not very good, but it's on there. So the first time you blow a bulb, you will have to do all that. If you blow a low beam, you can't get to it from the fender liner. I know because I tried. <laughs> That's a problem for future, Doug. Mm. There was one there. Okay, there Once that one. happens, I'm just getting carbon fiber covers and i'll just no longer drive at night <laughs> cover the whole night yeah you just drive with high beams on all the time like all the ultima hey sign me up <laughs> jeez man what am i gonna do oh well what are you gonna do for what if i had to do that oh, taking that, that taking that moving lip off I, I generally don't know how i'll get it back on that was a real that was a pain in the butt getting it on there can you? So wait, what? The nuts fall off the back of the bumper or something that hold the license plate in? Sometimes they'll pop out. Just... I wouldn't put it on the front anyway. I would just do it. I would just. I could just take the tag off like somewhere and then just put that on. That'd but be you, cool. You said you wanted one, so. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you Need just one. gotta get it now. Yeah, need to do one like this, and I'll put it on the front of the Tacoma. True. That would so, be. So I'm not gonna ship it. You gotta come get it. That's the... yeah. I'll come get it. Okay. <laughs> That's the catch. Man, I like the sound of the free R two D. Oh man, you get free R two D two and a Mugen front plate. For I'm seven, to make it for nice for top. for eight hours of my time. No, eight hours. How eight? What do you mean eight hours? It's three hours to get here. 
three hours drive back. It's longer than three hours. You know that. Three and a half hours. I'm sorry. Good Lutzville. Three hours and 45. Three hours and 41 minutes. It's all out there, bro. Don't say it out loud. Then we got to edit that out. (laughs) (laughs) There was a sword. Your address out loud real quick. I'm in Canton. (laughs) They had a... There was a sword and scale episode from there. From where? Good, let's go. Why you gotta put my business out there again? From Nashville behind you? <laughs> That's the part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I literally have the city. That's 15 minutes away. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. I wish I had something that was like Atlanta. I'm like, don't say where I'm at. <laughs> I literally have like iconic buildings in the back. I don't tell them where I'm at. <laughs> oh man. Oh dude, that was funny. Oh, man. All right. All right. It's time dude. to roll. I gotta yeah. go. <laughs> Gosh dang it, dude. This is a good episode. Yeah. Maybe I can come up this weekend. <laughs> You're like I guess I'll Oh, I don't know. I don't really care. Whatever. I'm trying to figure out how to... It just sucks when... Because when Kendall works, she's gone so long throughout the day. So. The other thing is, like, we can install all this stuff this weekend. I still got to get it aligned, so I, like, I can't drive the car on the line. Yeah. So that's it, because I don't know where to go with the line. Where are you going to get it aligned? Drew, maybe? I don't know. But I, I have no idea what his schedule is. Maybe you can, like... I don't know. I just want to get as much done as possible and then figure that out. I can align it myself if I have to. I mean, if it... What is this? What are we looking at here? Oh. Maybe, I mean... I mean, regardless... If I buy coilovers, I'll I buy coilovers. I'll still come up and help you regardless. But because then it's that's like, a, huh? Doesn't make sense unless mine aren't good enough for you. No, it's not that. I'd just like to help you anyway. But like, because then, because if you yeah, actually don't, have, don't buy, don't buy other ones. If you, I can't come up to the DM me looking like somebody scared my car. You understand? <laughs> well, what I'm what I'm telling you is, if you're gonna come up this weekend, you're not gonna get coilovers. Faster than mine if you're coming up this weekend. I mean, that's true, but also because then it puts you in a time crunch of trying to oh. get an alignment. You're driving that car to that meet. I have to drive the Subaru to that meet because that is where it started. <laughs> okay, that's fine. It's, is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. If I can get somebody else to drive it, no, the Subaru makes sense. That makes sense. That's I, apo- sense. I apologize. That makes sense. <laughs> I that makes it. that makes actually all the sense. So that's gonna be a sad day. What? The very last death motion meet. Maybe it's we probably, can do it. An outsiders meet. Literally gonna be the last day the STI is there ever. With all that communication from Drew, you know. I do. <laughs> I do. Oh man. Oh well, well that sucks, but <sighs> anywho. Dev motion. Yeah. I met you through that. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's, it's wild. It's at the end of an era, man. The end of an era for sure. But now we have one. Yeah, I'm killing my own vibe by thinking of this. But we have I, one. We yeah. have one now. Making myself even more sad than usual. <laughs> yeah. What is this depression? So, I don't know, man. We'll figure it out. Why does that keep coming up? There I mean, Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> if you can come up this weekend, then all good. Knock it out. Let's make sure it's going to rain for sure, though, because every time you go up, it rains. It's just have, tradition at this point. I know. I have to swap around the Tacoma wheel still. What, you mean rotate them? The front. I uh, have to. How do you even jack that thing? Well, you jack it up from the diff, right? You just put it on stands. Mm-hmm. 
outside, can you? Your jack doesn't go that high unless you stack pieces of wood or something. Yeah, no, I've I've done it just from the front. Um, yeah, from the front somewhere there's a jack point, and then the rear diff. They got high enough with that. And then just put it on jack stands and. I don't even think I. I think I put jack stands under it, but yeah, I put it on jack stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have two jacks. How are you doing this? Because the front and the rear have to be up in the air, at the same time. I'm leaving the rears there. I'm just gonna swap fronts around. Left to right. Mm-hmm. Oh, because of the brake thing. I get. I don't know. I don't know why the front left is wave. It's wearing out fast. Don't know. And my rears look great. The right front is like 40%, and then the left front is probably 30. It makes sense because it's rear wheel drive. Until yeah. You... I mean, the rears are perfect still. Yeah. That makes sense. You just need to rotate them more often. Well, I got the rears much later um, because the front set wore out so fast from the that brake issue. And then I moved those good rears to the front, and then my new rears I put on. So the tires don't have the same amount of mileage, but they also don't have that many miles on them as it is. So in in total, the tires that are on on the front have probably 10,000 miles, if that. Mm. But it's, it's wearing fast. So... You barely drive that thing, too. Hmm? Barely drive it, too. I know. That's what's annoying. So, I don't know if I should do, like, all terrains on it next time. I still, regardless, I, I want mud terrains, so I'm not going to do that. I'll stay mud terrains, but I still need to figure out why it's wearing out so fast. I have no idea. Terrains right now? Mud terrains, yeah. That's probably why they're wearing. Well, there's something going on front left, for sure. You can see it. I mean, the tire, the outer edge is way more beefier than like the rest of the three quarters you know bf goodrich came out with a ko3 now dude i'm on thunder <laughs> yeah you are <laughs> <laughs> yes you which they're getting price here <laughs> thunder er's yeah they're er, thunder er track grip <laughs> mts <laughs> yokohama has an mt too Dude, they're nice. Dude, they're only 761 for the full set. That's wild. That's literally what I paid for mine. And they have great reviews. What year? 285? 285, 75, 16. Oh, 16. Okay. Hmm. What's our tires difference? Like height difference? Yours or what? 275, 70, 17. You did 17 or 18? 17. You did? I thought you went 18. No, nah, there's 17 because the 16s wouldn't clear brakes. Uh, just kidding. Yep. You're probably a 33, aren't you? Mine are 33s, yeah. Okay, so mine's like a 32 and a half-ish, something like that. I don't remember. Yeah, it's, yours are going to be very close to 33 because of the 17. Yeah, I think it's... That's crazy. There we're only like half an inch apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I don't know what to do, man. I'm gonna have to get tires soon. But your offset's negative, isn't it? I mean, like way negative. Negative twenty-five, and I have an inch spacer. Okay, that's why. Mine are negative ten. So I'm essentially like negative fifty. <laughs> yeah, I want to feel like I feel like putting a spacer on mine, but I don't know. I don't know with not being leveled up yet that'd be all right yeah i don't know how this dude fit dang 285 70 17 on his gx and doesn't rub and i'm rubbing on, well i had to clear his mine right so like there's no way he's not Wait, rubbing two, on anything different 285 70 285 70 17 so he's wider than mine and taller sidewall and not rubbing and mine rubs on rubbed on everything he's lying he literally showed it he turned the wheel full lock and and missed all the parts that i'm hitting (laughs) so i don't know i don't know how Mm -hmm. 
How'd he do that? <laughs> I think the tires are just like different profile. Like my tires, tread heights just different. So I, I bet my tires measure 285, like measure 285, 70 height. Mm. Like that height would be. Oh, almost like uh, if you went with like a federal, whatever yeah. that tire was. Yeah. Except, except for going wide, it's taller than it usually is. I guarantee you if I measure these height wise, mm. taller than, than what they should be. Because the 285s were, 285s that I saw were um, Wild Peaks. Yeah. And my BFG KO2s rub, and his don't rub. Yours are probably have, yours are probably taller. I think they are. So those, have are a, those have a very deep tread. Which ones? Yours. Yeah. So I'm, I'm betting mine are closer to 33s. Like, probably pretty close to 33s. Like, actual dimensions. Yeah. Right, Time to wrap yeah. up. Wrap your willy. I got it. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs> Stay safe. Stay safe out there in these streets. <laughs> uh, thunders. Thunders. Man. Did they have good reviews? Oh, I... Two hours on this one. That's why. <sighs> yeah, it's because you missed me. That's fine. It's true. We got to do. Uh, let's do this every Tuesday. Yeah, we can do it every Tuesday. I just typed in R2D2. I'm an idiot. <laughs> it is late. I know you want them. I know you want them. It's fine. Uh, I gotta you don't do have something. To convince me anymore. I gotta do something, dude. That car's like startled. <laughs> Got all that wheel gap, man. I just hate to roll these fenders, man. So then you're. I mean, you got you got a twofold issue here. That's the main thing is you don't want the R2-D2s fast because then you will have to roll the vendors to get them on there. Yeah. Read you like a book, man. Psychology. I should, yeah. I should just go find some weak spec wheels. It's up to you. Get some Buddy Club P1s, tuck them in, and then just lower the car. I can't do that. I gotta have I gotta have the outsiders fit, man, dude. I'm telling you, you don't got to convince me. I'm on the team. I'm on the team, bro. <laughs> Sitting on the bench with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. All right then, fool. All right. I think this is episode seven. Just do one once a year. It'll be all right. A couple times a year. Yeah, that's thanks. Thanks to you, buddy. Schedule, schedule right now. Thanks to you over there in Dubai with the, all those builds behind you. <laughs> Don't give away my location, Doug. <laughs> Zip code zero one one seven. I don't know. <laughs> Mine starts with threes, so pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure that's a southeast thing. Is it? Is it? <laughs> yeah, all the. All so you're you're that, you're in the southeast. <laughs> yeah, all the states that I've lived in down down here are. Oh no, you're right. Same same zip code. Cali's like zeros, isn't it? Oh, I don't live there. I'm plan two. Or no, it's like nine o. Nine o two one o or some shit. Yeah, that's all. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And it's it's almost midnight over here. I'm out. You're right. All right, man. Okay. Deuces.